doing stuff with your hand activates a certain part of your brain that we don't usually use often. And so the more we do that, the more in touch we get with our consciousness and the more present we feel. Making art is meditative almost. So at least you're present with your loved ones. And that's really wonderful. It's about using art to create a day for kids with cancer and their family and just bringing people together, doing different creative things and just allowing people their creative freedom to have fun and make that lasting memory. It's really great, just everybody gets in and does their own thing and it's just, it's a lot of fun. There's melted crayon art, I'm at a watercolor station, they're making pom-pom monsters and pop-up cards and other like acrylic painting. The families are dealing with cancer 24-7, it, it never stops, it doesn't give you a break. You never stop worrying about it, you never stop planning the next step. Art workshops like this one give those kids and families just one break, a really healing break. It could be a couple of hours, but it's the moment for them to feel absolutely normal, just like anybody else. And we also went to the pump. A monster station. We did watercolor, we did regular paint, and, and we did melted crayon. Yeah, because we love the paint. I enjoy coming here because the main thing that they do here is art. What joy I saw on the faces of all of the people, both the guests and the volunteers, as they left this workshop today. For parents, it's another way to uh, help your kids to go through all those harness. I just found this experience is so rewarding and I wish that you would have more of these. I hope we can do more of them. Thank you for doing everything for the kids and for the family. Keep doing what you guys are doing because you guys are amazing. Hi everyone and welcome to this Google for Nonprofits live stream. I am Alessia, I'm a program manager on the Google for Nonprofits team. We recently delivered two live streams on our channel. One was an introduction on our Google for Nonprofit program and one was a training on how to use G Suite. So if you missed those, you can watch the recordings on our channel. However, one of the top questions that we get from nonprofits is how are other nonprofits using Google for Nonprofits product to be more productive, to be more visible organizations? What can we learn from others? So I'm very happy today to be here with the Kids and Arts Foundation. We have Purvi and Caroline. Uh, so Purvi is the founder, Caroline is program manager uh, for Kids and Art Foundation. And they're gonna share the story. Uh, they're gonna share with us some best practices and how they use Google products to be a very productive nonprofit that really changed the, the life of thousands of families, which is so a video that introduces all their activities and we will really hear from them, their hands-on experience. So do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. So, hi everyone, I'm Purvi Shah. I'm the founder of Kids and Art Foundation. I started the organization almost 10 years ago. We celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. And um, I'm Caroline Robbins, and I'm program manager at uh, UCSF uh, Benioff Children's Hospital, where we have a, a weekly art workshop. So in this live stream, we're gonna understand what's and our mission and activities and how Google for Nonprofit products are helping these activities to be organized and developed and they're helping kids and our foundation to really be around in a very smooth way and have a really great and strong impact on the community that they are serving. Um, we're going to share some tips and tricks. We're really going to hear from hands-on experience. Uh, and then you also have the uh, opportunity to ask for a few questions on our live chat. We have our Google for Nonprofit team that can help you over the chat with some product related questions. But would you like to ask questions to our speakers? We will save some time at the end to also answer those questions. All right, so I would say let's get started. So I really would like to hear from you what's Kids and Our Foundation mission. Uh, what's your activities and what's the story uh, of your nonprofit? So, um, 
The mission for Kids in Art is, you know, we pair up children who have been diagnosed with cancer, their siblings, and their care circle with artists, and together they create art. It's a simple mission, but the whole goal is to be there for the children and the families through their cancer life cycle, which is, you know, we have artists paired up with them while they are in treatment and even as survivors. And sometimes, unfortunately, kids do go in hospice and so we've lost a lot of children as well. So we also have programs for families who are in bereavement. So that's really the mission of Kids in Art to heal pediatric cancer through art. It's a very powerful and important mission. And how many workshops, uh, art workshops, do you organize over the course of a year or a month? Well, we, ha we have two um, weekly art workshops um, at hospitals, um, Stanford Children's Hospital and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. So that's once a week at both. And we have monthly destination workshops um, within the Bay Area. So um, they're held at uh, creative locations like Google. Just to add to that, we also have programs for uh, young adults, you know, children, teens that get diagnosed. We have a very special program for them. Um, and then we also do programs that are uh, referral based. So if a, a nurse or a social worker at the hospital sees that someone is in real need because of anxiety or just stress or they've been in the hospital. So if you get a bone marrow transplant, for example, you might be in the hospital for 55 days and never leave the room. Now that's crazy. So when they see that, that someone might benefit, they'll call us and we will send an artist and pair them up to do some work. So that really helps with anxiety. So Okay. And I guess also it's important to have this workshop and kind of, you know, on recurring mm -hmm. because you're there for the families. Mm -hmm. And what I was really impressed um, by, you can see we have seen the video at the beginning. We have a few pictures here that show the great work of the volunteers, the great work of kids and art, and what the kids actually do produce. We have like a few things uh, here. So um, some pieces of art that the kids have produced. And I guess um, this is like the video was saying, a time for family just to think about something else. Because mm -hmm. like when yes. cancer um, and such a, like, a terrible situation affects a family, that's everything you think about. So mm -hmm. you're there every time these families need it. And what I was surprised about is that Kids in Our Foundation is able to do this in the Bay Area, supporting thousands of families every year with a staff of only four people. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they're not even full time. <laughs> and they're not even full time. <laughs> So, and and uh, I have to say, with a lot of volunteers. Mm -hmm. as well. And a lot of so, volunteers. Absolutely. Yeah. But this means that you need to be a very productive organization. Yes. Uh, you need to work on strategies for fundraising, visibility, and so on. And this is why uh, I really wanted to have Kids and Art uh, Foundation today with us, because I think they can share a very powerful example on how they use Google products to become and to be an even more productive uh, organization. Uh, so when I met uh, Caroline and Purby for the first time, um, they were saying that they use G Suite a lot mm -hmm. in all of their operations. And what's great is that also they use a lot YouTube, mm -hmm. as we saw the video that we saw at the beginning and something that Kids and Our Foundation has produced and helps to give us a lot of visibility and also to explain a lot about the mission something that sometimes like reading on the website mm -hmm. would not be as powerful as watching a video, seeing what kids are doing, what, what it means for a family to get Kids and Art Foundation support. So maybe do you want to tell us a bit how you use Google products to organize, for example, a workshop? What do you do? What's your like daily use of these products to, to, to achieve the mission? Well, um, with the weekly workshop, um, everything goes into a document and um, so I name the document and date it so um, all the photographs from the workshop go in there um, I do a write-up every week we put all the program numbers in there which is essential to keep and um, we do all the volunteer information in there as well and their paperwork um, and all the sign-ins so that we have a complete uh, document of everything from that every single workshop that we do and same as we explained we have so many different workshops right so what 
uh, the G Suite has helped us to do is really get organized. So we have a team folder that we've created, like just Kids and Art Foundation. And then within that, we have a Kids and Art Programs. And within that, we have a UCSF folder, a Stanford folder, Destination Workshop. So whatever programs we have, and then whoever is in charge of them. So everyone has access mm -hmm. to them. And it's really been a lifesaver because anytime, for example, I'm not there day to day anymore. I was the executive director. I just stepped out of the role. So now I'm the chair of the board. So anytime I need something to give to the board, I don't have to look. I know exactly where it's going to be. And everything is dated. And um, I know who owns the folder. So if I need something, I just need to connect with that person. So um, I think organization wise, it's really helped us a lot. So. It's, it's a great place to um, find photographs as well, which are used for all sorts of uh, different for everything. things, for everything, and for you know, social media, and for our website, and um, yeah. yeah. And that's just folders, right? It means there's so much mm -hmm. else. It means we use G Suite, let's say, emails, for example, right? So setting up the emails. Um, we have given an email to everyone, right? All that is something that is very important, yeah. right? Because with G Suite for nonprofits, you can give emails with the domain yeah. of your nonprofit. Mm -hmm. That's so right. That's something that helps a lot in yeah. terms of the yeah. branding of your organization, the visibility, yeah. and also the collaboration among all the and members. And to look professional. And look professional. You know, definitely. for me, the main reason was even if you're a volunteer, let's have a volunteer at Kids and Art. Dot org, right? And if you are partnerships, that just when you have that, people outside just think you're professional. You, yes. They treat you in a different way. And we couldn't have done it if we didn't have access to just have multiple emails, right? And even with the, the team, we have groups that we've created because as we keep adding more people, it's just you're bound to forget someone. <laughs> you know when you're when you're putting everyone in so we just have a group for teams and then now with the board as well we've just created a group email for the board um you know nine people on the board you are you don't want to miss anyone out of and, course. and that's just that's been very helpful for us and it was really simple to set it up as well so right I, yeah i think you that you get more response as well when you have a Yes, and the main, main absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah um, and absolutely. that's that's what i mean by professional i think mm -hmm. in the past you know people would be like i don't want yet another email right uh, everyone's scared of like having too many too many emails to look at and we said we have we need it we just have to if you come in as a certain role even if you're a volunteer you need to have a kids in that email because it's important for communications with donors absolutely with companies and, and even so for on. yeah as you said for donors if you receive an email from purvi at something else you know <laughs> They're like, who is she and why is she talking about yes. kids and art? But if it's Purvi at kidsandart.org, they're like, okay, I'm legitimate, right? Yes. Uh, I think it's really important. So that's great. So mm -hmm. we saw like G Suite helping you with communication mm -hmm. yep. in, inside uh, and within your, uh, mm -hmm. your foundation with your donors, uh, the use of groups. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's great. It's fundamental when you, uh, when you have uh, people, volunteers, when you have uh, maybe an event to organize mm -hmm. when you want to make sure that the communication goes out to everyone uh, in your board it's important that you create group of emails so instead of sending emails to people one by one you can create a group yeah. where all the people on your board are or for example where all the artists volunteers in your case are yeah. let's say that um, kids and our foundation wants to organize a workshop in two weeks and they're looking for an artist to volunteers and mm -hmm. to run the workshop they could maybe just simply send an email to the group of volunteers and see if anyone is available. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's powerful. Uh, it's very productive. Uh, you could do the same maybe with a with a Google form. Let's say that mm -hmm. after an event, you would like to get a feedback on the event, or maybe you would like to recruit new volunteers. You can use Google Forms as people to fill in um, their um, information and just share uh, what they would like to do uh, for the org. And we do that with surveys. After each year, we try and send a survey out to families who've participated with us as well as the artists. Just, you know, five, three or five questions just to know how the season went, if there was anything they wanted us to change, any workshops they wanted us to bring back, like just simple stuff. But the survey really helps us, whoever answers. At least we get a sense of, okay, what's happening. And sometimes, of course, you just have to remind people and they will. The, this is a community that really wants us to succeed, so they're happy to. Uh, 
for the surveys. So yeah, the surveys are great. But what something you said earlier about events. Every time we do, uh, you know, once a year big event in our organization, we make sure we have an email that is that. So last year we created an email that said 10 year celebration at kidsinart.org. Just because, you know, it's again for me, coming from design background, branding is really important. It's important. You know, mm -hmm. we needed to make sure that anytime anything went out, people knew this was about the 10th year anniversary. And we were talking about that. So so that has really helped us as well. And we really used um, the folders and uh, for for the event as well. Oh, yeah, they absolutely. were um, really, really helpful for um, for the art mm -hmm. uh, cataloging and yeah. just uh, everything was in different uh, folders so we could uh, be more organized that way yeah and yeah. you mentioned also the use of spreadsheets to uh that's organize. a lifesaver yeah. uh so for example yeah so yes. for example with the destination workshops we have a, a parent ambassador who is in charge of a destination workshop and so she is the one who sends out emails to all our families and our social workers every time we have a workshop and then our executive director sends emails out to our artists but we have this google spreadsheet that's for the entire year so we every time we do january is this february is this so it's all you know planned for the year and that really helps us with data as well because at the end of the year we create that pie chart and everything in there to let us know a how many workshops we did how many people participated who were no shows how many artists how many volunteers because at the end of the year when we do the impact report that's where we get all the data from so it's 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 a lifesaver for us so we had 1700 children and uh, their care circles at the uh, treatment centers last year and so this is the information that we we gathered yeah. from all our um spreadsheets and it's important to add these numbers, yes. right? Especially Absolutely. to show the impact that you that you have uh, for fundraising, uh, I guess. And yeah, we're, we're very proud to, to, to be able to help you on, on Absolutely, achieving this mission. Yeah. Well, and the spreadsheets are not just for the workshops, you know, as I said, the board and even to, for uh, when we decided to get our program into the hospitals, we did it as a pilot and um, so Google spreadsheets, that's where we did a cost structure, you know, how much is it going to cost us to do a pilot, right? And that has really helped us just grow because each year from when we started to now, you know, with inflation or whatever, we've been able to keep adding and see where we started, where we are, and also for our grants. So we use the spreadsheet to create a budget. And so every grant you apply to, they ask for what's your budget and, you know, how are you going to use the funds? That's what we do. We use the spreadsheet and, um, you know, Excel and spread. Luckily, they work with each other, so we can do that. So so that's how we use the spreadsheets. So, that's thanks. great. I think this is a very good best practice and very use cases for other nonprofits because, um, I don't know, but like, I think there are challenges that all nonprofits mm -hmm. at different stages of their life uh, face. And it's important to hear how other nonprofits solved those challenges. Mm -hmm. So how do we uh, improve our brand? Mm -hmm. How do we uh, make better reporting? How do we draft better grant proposal? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a very powerful mm -hmm. uh, example that you're sharing. Yes. I think um, I forgot the chain of thoughts, but just talking about uh, problems that you were saying, right? The biggest problem we had was art. We have so much art that gets generated every workshop, right? And it's it's a great problem to have, but then we needed a system because we were like, how are we going to document all this art? And how do, how do exhibitions do it? How do museums do it? So luckily that's when Caroline joined us two years ago and she is an artist and she's worked, you know, that's been her background. And um, she used Google Drive, Google Suite, everything for the first time in her life just two years ago. And she's an expert now. But the, but the re reason I even bring it up is she looked at everything that was there and she's like, okay, looks like the spreadsheet will help me get our art catalog together. And we're like, what are you talking about? How, how, how's that going to work? <laughs> yes. So we, um, well, I was, I was guided, but um, I literally did, had never used uh, Drive before. So I did find it quite easy to navigate and sort of, try different things um, so it, it was easier 
And so I photographed all the art mm -hmm. and uh, created a spreadsheet. Um, we catalogued every piece of art mm -hmm. and it has its catalog number and year. And then we have the story, which of course is very important, the story of the, of the young artist that did the work. And um, we exhibit. And even then we can create another spreadsheet for the different exhibitions and um, uh, copy on to the pieces that we give to the exhibition. It's so, really made yeah. it easy because now what happens is from uh, 2018, we are, we are doing many exhibits. Like so, for example, whenever we do art, someone might say, like Nvidia had invited us to put up art. Uh, we are at lots of galleries there where a kid's and an artist's art is put up. Um, but now that everyone knows how to use the spreadsheets, it's really organized. So for we have a master spreadsheet for our art, but then we have one for each individual exhibit. So nothing gets lost and we know what went out and what's coming back in, right? And it's so. important not to get things lost because, you know, mm -hmm. These L they help you and yeah. like it's it's part of it, it's part of what you do yeah. and yes. it's important Definitely. to catalog it that yeah. uh, and maybe use it like in 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 like some oh, materials yeah. like this, right? And even this book. So we created these books, right? Uh, and this is all the kids' art. And it's a coloring book. So and you, you can have color. the name of the kids. Yes, yes. yes. And, and that's important. It's something yes. that if you don't catalog, you, yes. you, you will not yeah. know, right? So. Name, age, and most important is the story, right? So each yes. of these children are so, you know, they're going through so much in their life. Like we have kids from 2 to 26 because most children get diagnosed with cancer at 2 or 3. And, you know, some of them have relapsed. Some of them have gone through transplants. We have kids who've been in treatment for almost 11 years of their life that's a story right and they are so brave and then they come up with something like this it's like you know that's that's the whole thing it's like art can when you look at this you don't see it's a cancer child no, right no. you just see the art and that's really the mission like what we do we want to show the child as a child and not as a cancer patient and that helps us do that so and we like to think of it as well as um giving the art wings yes um and it's so empowering for the for the children uh, to see their art as a card or um, in the coloring book. And the families and mostly mm -hmm. siblings too, because the siblings are usually the silent warriors in all of this. They get yeah. dragged from here to there and every, their life gets changed. So when they get to participate with us and then they get to see their art in different places, it makes yeah. a huge difference. So, yeah. Right. And like when we're discussing, when we're preparing uh, the li this live stream, we're really thinking about how many things you can do and how many things you have to do uh, mm -hmm. right to run an organization mm -hmm. like this how productive you need to be mm -hmm. and what was really um surprising uh to me was the use that you make of youtube mm. uh, youtube mm -hmm. is sometimes uh perceived as complex mm -hmm. as like um as a tool that requires a lot of time uh mm -hmm. to be maintained it takes time it takes a lot of resources to produce powerful videos but actually the majority of the YouTubers uh, that are successful YouTubers just shoot their videos with their phones, Phone, yeah. right? So it's a myth that we have really to bust. And yeah. I think it's an art. Um, it's working very well in this as well. You have mm -hmm. a YouTube channel with very powerful videos, mm -hmm. videos that have very different objectives in their yeah. storytellings. They tell the mission, um, they show what you're doing, um, they show the work of volunteers, mm -hmm. they show the story of your nonprofit, which is also very important to understand where, why we're doing all of this. So how do you uh, maintain your YouTube channel? Um, do you have volunteers helping you to do that? And would you have just like any piece of advice you would like to share with a nonprofit that was maybe thinking about uh, delivering, about like shooting videos or like using YouTube for branding and didn't start yet? If you haven't started yet, I would say start it right away. <laughs> uh, because, you know, um, it's an extension of our brand. And what we do is, is simple, but it's hard to explain. It's like, you know, if people don't get it, they say, oh, you're just another art class. We are not that, right? And people think, oh, it's a nice to have. Whereas once you look at the videos, people realize it's a must have. 
We also have simple videos that we have our interns do. And these are student volunteers. And we will just tell them the same thing. Take your phone and just ask three questions and repeat the three questions to everyone at the event and then put it up, right? Yeah. So it's it, you don't have to have some uh, major or a degree in uh, creating videos. You can just do that. Another way we also do it is we interview artists and we tell them to do a selfie video and send it to us and then we put it up. So I think the we try and make sure any event we go to or any event we host, we will make sure there's a video and that we will mm -hmm. put it up. I think it's important also to think about videos in a very broad way, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Not only about creating a professional video that shows what you're doing, this is great and it's powerful, but also documenting a yeah, workshop, absolutely. Um, absolutely. using a vlog, mm -hmm. for example, showing what you're doing or like what you do to organize a workshop, yeah. interviewing the artists. Mm -hmm. And that can easily be done with a, with a smartphone, yeah. right? Like yeah. one of the like normal smartphones that we yeah. all use. And also our volunteer training. Right. So we mm -hmm. created a volunteer training video and, you know, just putting that up out there really saved so much time for us. It means now we have that we've created it. It's up there. We can add that link in all our workshops and people will just go and look at that because every time anybody comes to volunteer with us, they have to have gone through training. It's the hospital. Of course. It's HIPAA laws. You have to know uh, what you're doing and getting into and just simple things. And we were so happy that we could just post it somewhere and it's you know our branded channel right so it's our content and that just makes a huge difference for us it saves a lot of yeah. time mm -hmm. in onboarding yeah Abs people. yeah absolutely i think onboarding is perfect mm -hmm. word not only just for them and i've also made it a rule for even our board members like everyone has to go and check everything that we have like go on our youtube channel see what we have because if you're not familiar with it how are you going to you know be passionate about the mission, right? So it's it's been great. We just send them the link. And also for grants, it's been great help for us because the video that people saw earlier and the other videos since they're on a channel, we just add the link and that really helps when someone's giving us a grant to see that we're really professional. We've been doing this for a while and we're here to stay. If they give us money, we're not gonna just fold, right? So, yeah, and so really also really see the activities, Absolutely. right? So, like when we were talking about the first time we met about what kids and art is doing um the first thing we really caroline did with me was to share the pictures and mm. share the video and say this is what we do yeah it's i guess like unless you experience such a terrible thing it's very difficult for people to understand what it means for kids the value absolutely to produce art yeah what it means for a family to you know spend an afternoon with artists mm -hmm. and just yes. think about something else and i think the power of your yes. videos just show exactly that the mm -hmm. power of your pictures just show us exactly yes. that the videos are the powerful the most powerful thing and and with the music as well i think yeah. that adds but it, it's just it's just seeing it's the visuals and the sound and um, it's coming from the children, the volunteers, yeah. uh, the artists. So it's very direct. And um, I think it brings in more uh, volunteers as well when they see uh, the videos. And it does something else. So uh, Caroline, on top of being a program manager, she also does a lot of our uh, special programming, um, you know, like filling forms, to be invited for you know a talk or for writing mag uh, magazine articles or whatever, and that really helps her because everything is in one place. She can really go either to the drive to ca get the images or to the YouTube to get the links, or you know whatever else she needs, and then just send it off and fill the form. And I think that's really made our life easier. Earlier when I started it and when I was getting started, everything was like all over the place, right? If someone would ask me for something. I would be like, where is it? You know, how am I going to find it? So now it's like everyone knows uh, the yes. flow. And another important thing for the videos for us is research, because we're trying to focus a lot on art as healing in advocacy, as well as in research. There's very little research. And so we are trying really hard to use YouTube videos and try to do more videos that are easy for people to understand, but show the research behind it because there's not a lot so how do we make that happen and i think videos and you know moving uh images and just words really capture people mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard for them to keep reading a lot so, yeah so, yeah yeah 
So maybe my last question, then we can see if we have some questions from the audience, but what's the, you, you mentioned that you never worked with Google before, um, yeah. with Google tools before joining uh, Kids and our foundation. Um, so what's the one piece of advice you would give to a nonprofit that has just started, uh, maybe doesn't really know where to start mm -hmm. with Google for nonprofits? Um, what's your, what's your uh, kind of, Suggestion. Maybe I will answer it first, and then okay. I will let Caroline yeah. add on to that. I think when um, for every nonprofit, I think this is I, I will say it's a great resource. Um, for us, it's definitely been a lifesaver because we've ha we've been able to grow. You know, even though we have four people, um, we have a lot of core volunteers, brand ambassadors, and then other volunteers. We wouldn't have been able to be so seamless as we are and so for any nonprofit whether you're small or big i think just the thought of that the fact that you can be seamless look professional and find things when you need it mm -hmm. i think that right away should be you know a simple way to say just go and just do, do it, it now yeah. because how many times have the board members asked for numbers and you're like i don't know where they are that's you will you won't have that problem if you if it's all organized at least yeah. it's made up my life easy yes um well, my message would be not to be overwhelmed because um, if you're somebody like me that is uh, background is not in technology, I was like, oh, <laughs> and I didn't I didn't want it to stop my involvement with kids and art because I knew that I wanted to get more involved. I think it really helps to have somebody um, to start you off and guide you. But um, I think that it's easy to navigate and you can spend time just working things out um and that's coming from me <laughs> so um just given time and a little bit of guidance um i think it's really something that becomes your friend and it's really enjoyable and you just learn more and more and i'm still learning i ask pervy less and less about yeah. things yes. <laughs> but um it, it's been it's been really great and it just makes me feel uh, so much more uh, organized and um, I want to do more and set up new uh, files for this and spreadsheets. So it's been exciting. And that's like what you were saying, don't be overwhelmed. Yeah. What yeah. it means is mm -hmm. start, instead of thinking products, mm -hmm. think about the problem that is currently your nonprofit facing mm -hmm. and how the products could help you to solve for that problem. So if you're facing um, like a challenge where you would like to uh, have a better branding of your nonprofit, mm -hmm. spread your mission, then maybe start from YouTube. Uh, if you would like to make um, your organization more collaborative, more organized, and you really need those data, then maybe start to dig in a bit more into uh, Google spreadsheets, right? Step by step, yeah. um, the products have different scopes and they solve for different issues. So it's important to first understand what you're trying to do and then leverage on the product. And I'm glad you said that because now when I look at it, we have pretty much used every bit of Google for nonprofits, including the space. Uh, but we did start with one thing at a time. One thing you know? at a time. Because yeah. there was just no way for us to even know what we needed until we really got situated. Of course, every nonprofit has so many needs. The biggest problem is you have you don't have that many people who can do everything, or you don't have that many funds to do everything. The fact that this is a free, completely free service, um, we didn't have to worry about like adding more people, or we didn't have to worry about all these little things where you you know, keep adding dollars every time you spend on something. So having had that at the back of our mind, we weren't in a hurry to adopt something right away, right? Means when you're trying to buy a product, you have to understand everything and then you make sure you use everything, right? With this, because we knew it was there for us, we could adopt it and make it work for our needs. And that really helped us knowing that, okay, now we have we understand, you know, what we can do with the emails and the groups and all of that okay, we really need to get on doing the X or Y. And it's really helped us have like a more methodical process behind this, so. Yes, I always sometimes think as well uh, that it's a problem, um, but there is a solution. So you will find a way to uh, organize it 
or uh, find the solution to the challenge in there somewhere. <laughs> I would say you need someone in the organization who is spearheading it. Though. Yes, definitely. There has to be someone. Otherwise, it's it's difficult to just tell everyone, go do it on your mm -hmm. own. Someone who gives direction. You need, you need yeah. one person who's sort of, you know, the... Call them, call them the ringleader or the, someone who's yeah. spearheading it. Because otherwise, just creating a processes could be hard. Uh, you might suddenly get like five people using it in five different ways. Mm -hmm. So you do need like one person, like an admin, but one person who has really thought it through as to how they want to use it and then apply it towards the organization. That would be my recommendation mm -hmm. for sure. So, And um, we have two um, different weekly programs. And... Um, we found it really um, easy to have everything organized in the same way. Yeah, exactly. Um, because we could have it makes done it, it scalable. Yeah. Yes, we could have done it differently. Yeah. But we've made sure that everything's done the same way. Yeah. We have yeah. a question uh, okay. from Trevor in the live stream. Uh, what did you do to ensure your board members use their domain email instead of their personal email? <laughs> uh, I haven't. I cannot. <laughs> that's been a big struggle. Uh, and that's something that where I think the G Suite is not working for me right now because I have nine board members and only one and myself. We have kidsandart.org email. The others don't. And some of them have a Gmail account. So that makes it easy. But some of them use their work email. Mm -hmm. So every time we send them a file, even though they are, you know, uh, they can edit, it, yeah. they, they can edit, they can see the folder, they still need access. So it's been a friction right now. We're trying to figure out what to do. But yes, I'm sorry, Trevor. <laughs> I, <I'm> not, <laughs> I haven't been successful. And still Trevor is asking, when rolling out G Suite, um, did you work with a consultant? Did you use the educational resources from Google, how did you approach this? Just like I started the nonprofit, not knowing I was really starting a nonprofit, I just went for it. <laughs> and then I had a person, uh, a technical person who gives us uh, 10 hours a week of his time. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that was the best decision I made. You know, everyone thinks that that's not important, but having someone who has the technical abilities just made life so easy. But I did ask him this question before I got here, and he said that it's minimal. Uh, even on his end, it's like so simple uh, for him to add and remove things that, uh, you know, between him and my, him and me, we've set up everything by ourselves. So your so. suggestion would be by one person Absolutely. is your point of contact yes. and another person that's part of the org that kind of, sort of oversees it and yes. knows about yes. the process. Absolutely. And so he and I are the gatekeepers, you know, uh, over Uber gatekeepers, so that if anything, you know, needs to be done or happens, we know what happened and we can sort of go in and, and sort of solve it. But I would highly recommend, you know, for nonprofits that are people always willing to give you expertise, that's the expertise I would ask for, you know. And yeah. that's who we feel that we can go to. Yes. Uh, with questions and that's a nice feeling to know that there's somebody there uh, that yeah. can help absolutely yeah. right so if there is no other question from the audience uh, we can uh, uh, maybe prop up here um, and i really wanted to thank you for being here uh, you. for your time and uh, for sharing uh, your precious experience i think it will benefit a lot of nonprofits out there Again, this is a question that we always get. What are other nonprofits doing? And I think you shared very powerful examples. And again, you organize two workshops a week. You organize very big events. Mm -hmm. You change the life of thousands of families and you're only for uh, permanent staff, not yeah. even full time. Not even full -time. So yeah. uh, it's incredible. And thank you, really, for your Thank experience. you. Oh my thank God, very it means much. I have to say that it would have been hard to do everything we've done and the growth that we've had with our workshops without knowing that we have this, you know, the G Suite. Uh, I'm not just saying it because I'm here uh, to talk about it, but it has really helped mm -hmm. as I have brought in more people with diverse backgrounds. We work with artists all the time and not all artists are very technical, right? And which is fine. It means it has been really simple for us to sit down and do a, you know, one hour, 
just go through everything. Everyone comes with a laptop. This really becomes a workshop in our <laughs> office. It's like everyone's sitting around or hangout, you know, we use hangout a lot. Uh, we'll just do hangout and say, okay, everyone look on the right. Do you see the six little squares? That's what you're going to play. <laughs> so, so anything like that, it has really helped us yes. do expand our mission. So it really thankful. makes us super proud. Yeah. And for me, I started as a volunteer and uh, now I'm using <laughs> Google Drive as a yeah. uh, program manager. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you so much again. And thanks everyone uh, for watching. Thank and you. yeah, we'll host some new nice dreams in the near future. So we'll keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you.